Okay, so this is just to document, this is day five on the trainer project. And today a lot of the um, work that was done had to do with the wiring of the, uh, the actual PLC platform. We only had three guys here today. So two of them did the PLC platforms and here's all the jumper wires um, for the bus and everything looks pretty good. Um, we got the AC hooked up and you know they've got everything neatly done we've got some of the signals that are being run in this little uh, expando um, braid and this is uh, the unused stuff but it's nice and neat and we've got everything uh, wired up and it looks like both of them are pretty much in the same shape this one I'm showing because it looks a little nicer wiring wise this is a good job um, but next time out we're going to um, probably one of the first things or perhaps one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to actually plug this in so this one gets a cable that goes from here right over to here and we have a standalone test where we can use just our controls to um, you know run through and have our stack light to uh, operate our stack light and just run through the configurations and just to test out the basic functions of this platform itself now on one of our actual big trainers, we actually have been doing a lot of the wiring that goes um, between, we've got all the DC distribution here, 24 volts in the uh, common bus, and now we've also wired up the interfaces. Now these all wire into the module terminal boards. So we've got most of the wiring done for this guy. Now there still is a lot of the internal module wiring so none of the internal um, wiring for the sensors you know this has a sensor for uh, this is our sorter and this has a sensor for when the sorter is full and then it also has sensors at either end of the cylinder slide so it monitors that with the read switch so we can tell when it's in the um, retracted position here or when it's in the extended position but we can test those out after it's wired we can test this as an individual module and just see how that's wired and then we can do it for all three units and then we can integrate at the system and that's uh, where we stand right now and it looks pretty good we'll hopefully see some uh, testing of at least the PLC platform on Thursday and see how that goes like any good technician Okay, so this is day six, the end of week three. We've got three more weeks, and what we had done last time out is we said we were going, we had the PLC platform over here pretty much finished, and we were going to test it. And we have a little standalone program that we use to test it. Now, what we have is we have this little Wonka box, um, test box, that we can just throw some switches in to the circuit, and it can do some different things, and we'll show that off. But uh, the main thing that we did today was, let me go over to the end of the table, and uh, we had, last time we had wired up the external wiring, and today what they did is we had uh, all the internal wirings for the cup dispenser, I mean this is the sorter, for the hopper fill, and the cup dispenser is over here. So we wired all this up, and now we weren't going to active with the system, but what we did is we took a look at all the signals and we manually would move these signals into position and make sure that the 
default status was correct on that. So we did that for all the modules and everything looked pretty good. Next time out we're going to uh, run this, uh, try to run this live and uh, take a look at it running through its paces. But the first thing to do, and we'll show it a little bit at the end of this video, is just to check all the sensors. Um, you know, check that our sensors, we get the sensor active signal there, and then that we get the same signal on the PLC. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty good indication that we're ready to go. So first, I'm going to need to first um, go back over here to our standalone test here. And I'm going to actually hook up, which it's not hooked up right now, but we have these extra inputs and outputs. Now these are specifically for testing of units and they're also for your customer interface. So um, these are inputs, right now we're going to put the test box to it, but if you had an additional piece of equipment uh, that you wanted to be monitored or controlled by the PLC, uh, these signals go right into the PLC, so if you have an extra piece of equipment you just co code the PLC to control it and you should be ready to go with it. So I'm going to hook up our test box and then we'll put this guy through its paces and see how it works. Okay, so now we've got the Wonka box hooked up and what we're going to do is we're going to download the program. Now this is a standalone and you can't see it very well because uh, of my glossy, glossy, glossy screen. But um, we've got a program running and this is a standalone program and you know if we're going to download it we can just write the project into the PLC comes up with some screens about what you're trying to load and what you're trying to put it into and all you do is just click on it change from run to stop you can see we're in stop mode while it loads and when it's done it'll say go back to run mode yep and now we're in run mode we can monitor this now what this is simply is just a test program so we can test some different functions now over here on the switch box we've got this switch kind of puts it in the manual or automatic mode that's just what we call it and then we go through the sequence with the light stack. But when we're in this manual mode here, our buttons on the switch, they just light up the light. So when I press this green button, the green light comes on. When I press the reset, the yellow light comes on, or the amber light. And then stop is the red light. And basically, all we're trying to do with this is when you're initially trying to uh, figure out if it works, this verifies that you know the, the control panel is hooked to the right place the PLC is reading the right signals and then it's controlling um, the right colors on the lamp now we'll take this and we'll go into uh, automatic mode and when we get that this is how we normally start the red lamp is on now we hit the reset button because the reset uh, resets some internal registers and we need to do that when we're in automatic mode when we go to the green button it's going to have a startup uh, sequence that you'd see on a lot of machinery where the yellow light flashes a number of times before the system becomes operational. So when we press that, and I think uh, what we have here is we have five flashes at about one second each. So the yellow light will flash three, four, five, and now it goes green. So now our system is operational. And we have some other uh, switches on the box where we can uh, make the same, we reset it, and now the uh, blink rate is slower. So it does the same thing, except now we've changed the, uh, the timer, which times out from a half second on a half second off, so now it's a full second on, a full second off. And then we can also uh, vary how long it's going to take to count. So now instead of counting to five, it's going to count up to, uh, uh, I think it didn't get it quite right there. But now it should count up to 10 before it uh, goes green. And what we're doing is we're just varying what goes into the timer, what goes into the counter, so you know those functions are working. And we've also got a little function on here for our lamp test. And anytime we're doing this, all three of them come on at once. So if we go back into our normal start condition, um, we reset it and we start counting if the lamp test overrides everything. So uh, anytime we go to the lamp test, all the lights go on. And we also have some LEDs on our box right here. And these LEDs, the first one tells us when we've actually hit the uh, start button. 
uh, this, uh, I'm thinking this last one tells us when we, our green light is on, and that means our system is ready to run. So as soon as I hit the start button and the light starts flashing, this first LED will turn on. Then when the green light comes on, this uh, last LED or lamp will turn on. So if we look at this, okay, while we're flashing, the first one is on. And when it finishes and the green light is on, then this last one goes on. The one in the middle is a fault. And what we can do is, let's reset the system. We can inject a fault in here and just make sure that our fault circuitry circuit is working. And this one is a little bit odd, but um, we go through our cycle, we turn on, and then we kind of simulate that the system is running. And so after the system is running, um, we kind of have a 20 second that the system is running because after it finishes running is when if we have a fault, it'll go red and it'll start blinking red and that's the way you know it's a fault and there's our 20 seconds so we have a blinking light and you can also see down here that we have a blink or have a light on and that's the uh, light to tell us that it's a fault so there's a few ways you can uh, just run through some paces make sure that the PLC seems like it's working and you know it's not that elaborate but that's one way that we know that the connections are correct and that you know our PLC is doing what we think it should be doing so that's the uh, startup of this we're going to take a quick look at some of the faults that or some of the functions that we did with the full system you know we're not under PLC control but we can statically test things so we'll take a quick look at that Okay, so we're back at the big trainer, and what we're going to do is we're just going to statically look at the system. Now, we've got the, instead of that standalone code that we had before, we have the actual operational code in here. Um, now, the thing isn't tested, so what's going to happen is we're going to go through the startup procedure, and then the carriage is going to start moving towards the home position. Now, we're going to stop that because we don't really know exactly how well everything is working but that's a good sign that we have our signals connected correctly and um, it looks like it's going to work so what we can do and some of our sensors need to be adjusted but the first thing we can do is we can go in here and we can manually move um, some of these sensors and right here hopefully we can see right there is an LED that shows when we're extended so it's on and there it goes off. So we can make sure that that sensor is wired correctly. And then at the other end, we have another one for when it's fully retracted. So there it's fully retracted and the LED is on. There it's off, there it's on. And we're going to do the same thing for the other, the cup dispenser. So right now, um, it's fully retracted and you can see the LED. When we move it, the LED goes out. And now as we fully extend it, You see that, and I gotta get to the fully extended position, that the LED comes on. And there it goes off, there it goes back on. So we do get some indication that things are working. Now, when we can also uh, take a look at the signals on the PLC, and we can see where these are coming in. And you can see this signal, it's on our expansion board number one and, and it's pin number six so pin number six is when it's fully retracted and then when we start extending it it goes out and then as we fully get it extended then input number five goes high so we can see that it's working and we're getting the right signals at the right pinouts in our PLC and we can do that for all the uh, the units and we can make sure that we're getting the right signal at the right um, point at our PLC and at this point uh, without you know we don't want to turn it on and uh, have things go haywire on us but this does connect pretty much endpoint to endpoint uh, that we have the wiring correct and the wiring is a pretty big task so that getting the wiring correct and by the way we did have a couple of little glitches uh, that you know we don't show you but uh, we took care of those they were kind of minor issues with some of the wiring but uh, making sure that the wiring is correct and, you know, we have LEDs for a reason, um, it's to make sure that everything is connected correct. 
Uh, this looks pretty good, and on Tuesday we're going to uh, run it as a system. Um, now our second system is still being in, and I'll take a quick walk over here, but uh, that one, we, we are short a couple of parts, but uh, that one we're kind of doing in, in the main portion of wiring up the second one. So uh, this one's probably a day or two uh, from being finished. We'll, we'll probably end up having this one, uh, we might be missing a part by the end of next week, but this thing will be basically finished except for maybe a missing part or two. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, test the other finished unit and run it through its paces. So that one should be pretty good. Now, you know, we still have a couple classes left, and part of the thing that we're going to task our uh, teams with is they've got to actually write the PLC code. Uh, you know, we have some operational code that we use, but uh, we're going to see that's part of their task, and we'll see what they come up with. And that should work out pretty well. So that's where we are at the end of week three. Uh, three weeks down, uh, three more to go on the trainer, and it's looking pretty good.